Well, there's the buffering we talked about, but that didn't last too long. So yeah. let's see what happens when we go through here. I, should um, I just keep moving my head to see if I'm buffering too or what? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, you're always slightly buffered. But um, we're going to go over some new numbers came into Phoenix market. And then I want to talk about the title where I said that, you know, the banks are getting the big squeeze coming on here. This new thing that's evidently regulation coming out on the 27th of July, which is the day after. Um, we have the Fed announcement of whether or not they're going to go up, down, or sideways. But it's interesting to look at our market right now, Pat, and you look at the CMI, and we got a lot more red numbers. But their commentary here I find is interesting where they said um, the resale market is healthy despite the highest demand is low and getting weaker. The reason the supplies are so high is the supply is so low and not improving much, if at all. There are few buyers and not much to buy. So I go to my seven day moving average. I cleaned it up a little bit here. Um, but you know what? Demand is, it's, it's still sitting there at about 2,800 and it's kind of baselining kind of where it has been. So demand was really low, you know, after the 4th of July weekend, but I don't see any alarming bells right here. New listings starting to come up a little bit, but again, not much, like you say, muddling along. Exactly. Here's anyway. Here, where are we? Here, here's the index, Pat. This is where I was headed. We showing on my seven day moving average. I don't think it's uh, a big a turnaround as they show, but we can't ignore this. It's going the other way and has been since June. Uh, now the CMI index, um, we can't lean on that and say it's seasonal. Uh, the seasonality doesn't play any impact in the, you know, the CMI. So, you know, we're heading the other way. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you're uh, talking so about softening eyes, prices at homes? Home, home prices softening? I'm not seeing that yet. I think what we're going to see when we first look at it is uh, I'm seeing uh, um, price changes are still hanging where they have been, going yeah. up slightly from 1000 to 1100 65 so that's where it'll show up uh, new listing pricing is is coming down but again it's not it's not very much but if we hang here for a while then yeah that's going to be a going to be a well, problem like, was that the case so obviously like you said before <clears throat> they're not going to change your price they're going to start giving concessions before they give a price change they're going to give up one or two percent concessions and then then once the concessions maybe then they will lower the price well, over time, appraisals will form the lower price, too. Yeah, so, exactly. A lot, exactly. Of, a lot of moving parts. So let's jump on this thing real quick here, Pat, that you sent me yesterday. And it's uh, saying here that Wall Street's residential mortgage mandates facing a big shakeup. And they're adding something that's going to be by July 27th. They're going to announce what it is. Regulators have said big Wall Street banks might face a 20% average increase in overall capital requirements the focus on large lenders residential mortgages hasn't been mentioned the u.s has been expected to keep these mortgages in line with the international framework now i really don't need i don't know what this means but it said in the u.s a 50 percent risk is now assigned to many first lien mortgage loans so it sounds to me like they're going to up the requirements for big banks but small banks don't have to have the same capital requirements. Yeah. I mean, cause there's different, there's different size. I mean, I obviously we'll talk about this the next uh, couple of weeks and see what kind of impact or keep an eye on it. Obviously, you know, to be an expert in one topic, you know, we, I brought it to your attention and um, you know, there's a lot of ramifications, implications for banks, but there are different size banks. You know, that's the thing. It's, I think it's going to make it a little bit, you know, dicier is that you got large banks, you got, you know, larger, medium sized regional banks, you got small to medium sized big banks, you know, for them to apply the same set of regulations across the board. I don't know if they are going to do that or not. Obviously, it doesn't sound like they are, but that would doesn't just, sound like it. That, that would just obviously that would be, you know, you just can't do that. Um, but there are some regional mortgage banks, you know, they're just they're non banking mortgage. They're just all they do is mortgage banking. Because a lot of people, I come to find out, I think a lot of people don't understand or don't know. And they, it, obviously, it's not their business to understand it. But, you know, uh, this one lady I was doing a loan for a couple months ago, she goes, oh, I just thought all the rates were the same for all the banks. <laughs> you know? 
So, you know, everybody's got different um, capital requirements, different rates. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. We're going to have to keep an eye on it, obviously. I'm just, we're just, I'm just kind of wanting to bring it to your attention so we can bring it to other the attention to everybody that there is going to be, there is going to be some tightening. They've got the regulations right now. If they just used what they had on the books, it'd probably be, you know, I don't know if they're going to come out with more regulation or what. Yeah, we're not sure. I just think it's just one more thing that's waving over the, the mortgage industry right now. But it did say that a lot of uh, mortgage lenders are not going to like this. So um, yeah. it's just one of those things to watch. It's, you know, watch out. We're from the government. We're here to help. For those of us watching us live, uh, while we buffer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the buffering spots and then I will re-upload the video so that you can watch it later without all the hiccups that we have here. But I appreciate your patience. So. Um, it's just, I got to call Elon Musk and say, hey, dude. Um, so what's happening in rates here? Just kind of more of the same, Pat? We went up to yeah. like 7.0 today. Pardon me? We went up to 7 today. Yeah, I mean, no, we're seeing, um, right now we saw the, the 5.5 coupon is up now, 9 basis points. A 10-year treasury is down. Um, these are rates. They're coming back. They came back the last week and a half or so we had kind of a tough day yesterday yeah we're just once again we're seeing muddling along here i mean we've got the six six month you know as i pull the market out the rates we're just kind of stuck in this channel um we got the first half i mean of this year has been kind of interesting just kind of you know they said sales are down you know lawrence Yoon said that the sales are down 23 percent um Next week, we got an action-packed week. We got the Fed on Wednesday. We got the PCE, personal you know, consumption expenditures, PCE, on Friday. So um, we're definitely going to be seeing the, you know, moving off the middle ground here, I think, uh, going into the, you know, this will, this will certainly set what's going into the fall. You know, we're Well, I read yesterday, or actually read this morning, that in the bond market, there's two different numbers that they're looking at. One is... The good news is the CPI report, but the bad news for bonds when it comes to job growth. So yeah. it's kind of like, you know, on one hand, inflation's coming down. On the other hand, um, you know, jobs are still going up. That, so the Fed has to look at both. So are they going to raise next week, stay flat uh, sideways, or go yep. down? So they're betting that they're going to go up. Um, but, you know, you know, I'm glad I'm not Jerome Powell. So it said, it said here, it said, uh, weren't exactly sure how to go about given the state of flux of the Fed's rate outlook for the most recent CPI data. Looked at another way, CP argued for a softer stance from the Fed next week, whereas today's data said not too soft, Jerome. So, <laughs> so hard to tell where this is going to shake out. 